All right, today I want to look at some of the Furuta Star Trek collection. Um, all I really know about these is they're Japanese products. I believe they might be blind boxed. And each of them comes with a piece to build another figure, I believe. Uh, I just bought a bunch randomly, the ones that I wanted, primarily the Enterprises. I also have the DS9 somewhere. I cannot find it right now. And I always wanted to get the Defiant and the Romulan Warbird, but for some reason the Defiant is rare and the Romulan Warbird is, I believe, the the bonus piece that comes with its set. So it's extraordinarily rare and runs for anywhere between $60 and $100 on eBay. Um, let's see if we can get a look at these. These are neat little plastic. I think they are disassembled in their boxes and you put them together. Um, Whoever I bought these from glued them all together, except for the Enterprise B. That one pretty much comes apart all the way. Uh, let's see. They are about four inches long. Let's see if I can get some better lighting. Let's do a size comparison. Here we have a Transformer Deluxe Generations. Um, and here it is next to the Enterprise D. They are approximately of a length. And depending on which one you look at, the width, of course, is quite different. If you, if you are familiar with the Hot Wheels Star Trek line, there's the Enterprise D, here's the Furuta Enterprise E, or the Enterprise D, maybe that's a better comparison. They are significantly different sizes. The Hot Wheels one is much larger. Um, and it's a little bit more detailed, of course, but... This one has a fair amount of sculpting in it, um, decent paint. Actually, on the Hot Wheels one, there is no sculpted line there. On these, on the Fruta one, that is a little sculpted, two lines for the red. Uh, it's got a raised emblem there. Let's see if I can do this without bumping the camera so much. Um, what else to say compared to them? The, the bridge dome is raised more. comes off its stand easier, usually. That one's pretty tight. Um, but anyway, so in some respects it actually has, in some places I guess, it has more sculpting in other places not as much. Um, this is not a review of the Hot Wheels one. So let's start with the original. The 1701 Enterprise. kind of a goofy looking ship, but I've always liked the design. It looks really good in profile in particular. Um, again, I guess there's not really a whole lot to say about these. They're all pretty much the same. They have some sculpted lines in for detail. Some of the painting is done at sculpted edges, some not. I wait to get more light. But, you know, I'm not a super knowledgeable person when it comes to the minutia of the various ship designs. So as far as I know, this is pretty accurate representation of the original series Enterprise. Um, I know there are a couple of variations. Um, it has the little ball ends and no spikes on the front. And that's really all I know about the Enterprise. If we bring in the refit, which I believe is identical to the A, and this one is labeled as the A, I guess I should say the the lettering on all this, I don't know if it's tampoed on or painted, but it's all very nice and clean. The Enterprise A might be close to being in scale with this one, but other than that, they're not really in scale with each other. I find it interesting that the warp nacelles are blue on the inside and darker gray on the outside. I don't know why they're also not blue. But this has always been a really good update to the classic Enterprise. The swept back pylons. Um, a more arching forward neck. Um, each of the stands is personalized. USS Enterprise NCC 1701-A. With a copyright that I don't care. 
Um, again, sculpted lines, lots of paint. Uh, the paint's pretty clean, not too many messed up lines or overspray or underspray. Considering I think these might be a bit of a candy toy in Japan, or have been, um, the paint's pretty good. Uh, the Enterprise B. A refit of the Excelsior class ship. This one has a really cool profile. I've always liked this one. It's, I don't know, there's something bird of prey-ish about it to me. I don't know what it is. Um, again, lots of decent sculpting, really good paint. This one, though, because it wasn't glued together, you can see it came in roughly three pieces. And you stick it together. Considering how often this one kind of falls apart, I may end up gluing this one someday. All right. Again, I'm not super familiar with all the little details of these ships. Um, I do have the brand new, just released Enterprise B by Diamond Select. That'll be, what, it's a 16 or 18 inch long ship. So I will probably have some more details. Maybe I can compare them to this one and see if, if there's a lot missing. But I probably won't because it has the right shape. It has the right deco. It has the right lettering on it. It has what I need from it. So let's see, what else do I have? The Enterprise C, which as far as I know was only ever seen in yesterday's Enterprise, a fabulous episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, I like how this one is starting to pull out the shape of the D that we are so familiar with from Next Gen. Um, it has a much larger saucer in comparison to its body, and it's got the really short warp nacelles where the other ones all have really long ones. Um, this one has lots of little windows uh, sculpted into it. None of them are really painted. It's even got some... This one is, wasn't glued together all the way. It's got some on the bottom of the saucer. It's got some on the neck, as well as some on the body. Lots and lots of little windows sculpted in. Lots of nice sculpting on the warp nacelles as well. And again, clean paint, even though these lines are going across perpendicular sculpted lines. I think it's focusing on the right ship. Let's get these other guys out of here. Um, there, now you can see it a little better. Anyway, lots of sculpting. Sculpted detail, even on the bottom of the model, where you wouldn't necessarily see a lot of it. It has... It still has plenty of sculpted detail and paint. I have owned these ships for uh, three years-ish, I think. In late 2009, early 2010, I became really active on a Star Trek forum called trektoy.com, I believe. And found out about these, went on eBay and bought a set that consisted of all of the Enterprises and a couple others, which a couple I gave away. I kind of regret that now because now I wish I had them. Um, and the DS9. Um, again, we already looked at it a little bit. Here's some more of the bottom detail sculpting on the Enterprise D. I do really like the paint. I'm not getting the light in there very well, but I like how the saucer is painted. Rather, the deflector array. Again, these are not in scale with each other. This one should be quite a bit larger than the original Enterprise the Enterprise A, if I recall my numbers correctly. The D is close to twice as long as the original and A, and clearly these ones are not. They're all roughly the same size, which makes for a more, for more uniform display, but I, I wish that there was a line that was in scale with each other, because I would love to have a much larger Enterprise D and Enterprise E to go with the originals. But such is life. <clears throat> and finally, my personal favoritist of the Enterprise designs, the E. I love its profile. Such a sleek, um, just amazing looking ship from all angles. I guess the top is kind of awkward. The saucer is so large compared to the, pilot, the, the warp nacelles that you know, it's a little goofy looking from the top, but I love it. Um, it definitely looks better from the sides or from the 
back or the front or just not a not a dead on top view. But again, lots of detailing and paint. Um, yeah, just such a beautiful ship. I love it. I cannot find the box that has my few Star Trek Hallmark ornaments. I have the E and the D. And I have the DS9 in there, I think, from this line, and I wanted to compare them size-wise. But these are also smaller than the... At least I'm pretty sure this one is smaller than the Hallmark Enterprise E. I think it's probably closer to the Hot Wheels size. Well, like I said, I can't find it, so... I don't know. But anyway, I've got the new Diamond Select Enterprise B on the way. And hopefully the E should be following shortly, and I will probably throw up a review of those because they're cool ships. Diamond Select has done really good work. Um, I do have my original Enterprise E right here. So if you're familiar with the Diamond Select ships, you can see it's huge. It doesn't fit in my light box. It completely dwarfs these Fruta ships. And I didn't think it worked, but I put new batteries in it last night. I should do a separate review for this, but since I've got it here, let me throw some lights and sounds. I love that. The, the, the new E that they've got coming out, it's probably the same sculpt, but it's a more accurate paint job. Uh, they are really seen at Nemesis version first, and you probably couldn't tell because... This one has some weak lights Fire all weapons. only here at the front of the nacelles and the impulse engines and the deflector dish down below. But the new one has LEDs all in, all through the warp nacelles and it's going to light up so much better and it's going to look awesome and I can't wait. And that was so off topic for the purpose of this review. So I will shut up now. In short... If you want to hunt eBay and look for some of these Furuta ships, some of them are crazy expensive, like the Romulan Warbird, um, the Defiant, and uh, and some of them are not. You can probably get, I think I got lucky and paid about 70 bucks for this set that had all of the ones, all of the main ones I wanted, except for the Romulan Warbird and, and the, 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 the Defiant. But that was a good price at the time, because this one tends to go for $30 by himself. And I got all of these, plus a couple others. For around then, no, that was several years ago. I don't know what the prices are like now. Shutting up now.